like your business never even happened. I want one, thank you. How does it taste? Is that delicious? They've ruined rainbow-flavoured ice cream for an entire generation of children. There you are. Oh, yum! Give me some rainbow crap! What is this? Oh, I didn't know you had the kitchen skills whip. Did you make this all by yourself? In a way, yeah. Wow. Uh, and uh, have you put nuts all the way through it? Have I? Wow. Uh, yeah, recipe changes every time. This is unbelievable. Your breath smells. Bedroom. Anyway, let's, should we lift the tone of the show? Mm. I reckon we stay right in the underpants region. Wild in concept, yet simple in delivery. Welcome to the day in the life of... Was that his... Was that his bubble phone? Come on, has he That's, put it that close? This is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life, and it's balls. Us blokes never talk about underwear. Well, weed guys do. So Bonds came up with a ballsy way to sell their jocks. It's a brilliant idea. I love the testicles. Is it getting cold in here? Yeah, is it, it's, is it chilly? I thought it was breezy, just me. It's breezy, no, isn't it's it? very like cold. really it? cold. And Bonds have even had the balls to stick this on the side of a Melbourne building to show just how chilly they can get, with the boys reacting to temperatures on this giant thermometer. Funny balls. Balls aren't usually that funny. I warmed to the balls. Brain, you're not wearing those undies, are you? This is the brain. These are my favourites. I think Bond's really got that relationship between the balls <laughs> and the brain. All right, it's a very complicated relationship. I repeat, we have a singularity. Yes! Get it! This enlightening ad takes you through all the ups and downs of what goes on inside a man's undies. The good. Brain, we've just spotted a female. We're thinking of heading over for a conversation. The bad. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know what happens to us when we go for a cycle. It's it's horrific down here. Oh, oh that's going to be a rash. <laughs> and the very, very ugly. Brace for impact. In three, two, one. I came in like a... Oh, They've captured that, that moment when your balls are kicked or knocked or, you know, need... I didn't feel like, did you feel anything? No, I think I feel okay. No, I think we're going to be all right. Oh, oh, yep, I'm feeling it straight away. Women learned a hell of a lot too. I didn't realise that swimming was such a bad thing for balls. Do you even know what happens to us when we go for a swim like this? Hey, 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 whoa, whoa. And I also didn't know quite how uh, the movement occurred. Gee. <laughs> doesn't really want to make me buy underwear. It no. does make me want to scratch my nuts. <sighs> all right, calm oh, down. You're not itchy at all? Back in 2006, Cabri was hit by a small salmonella crisis and was forced to recall over 20,000 chockey bars across the UK. How does someone go, I know how to counteract that? Get a gorilla. That'll sort it. The gorilla and the magic of a Phil Collins masterpiece combined to give us one of the most weirdly memorable ads ever. Because the first few shots of that, you're looking at this monkey, and I thought he was having some kind of sexual experience. You know, he's kind of... And his eyes are rolling back. And then I thought, no, he's on the dunny. And then it cuts to him drumming. They wanted to advertise Cadbury's without showing the chocolate. Hard sell, but the result, people remembered the brand. It's so relatable and it's it's something that leaves an imprint on your mind. It's a phenomenon in and of itself. I don't think I went out and bought more Cadbury's because of it. I just enjoyed the ad. But I love the fact that when that ad came out, people actually thought it was a gorilla. Well, he's got a suit. You bet. And the guy inside, well, he's made a career out of acting like an ape. He starred in Planet of the Apes and King Kong. He's now your go-to gorilla. So he's just good at acting like an ape. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> if you like that, wait till you hear me on the piano. Coming up, superhuman feats. Every story is inspirational. The time that started a war. Get laid, get a bloke. Yeah. But which wildest commercial will be number one? Welcome back 
to 20 to 1 as we count down the world's wildest commercials. Yeah, and as we all know, some of the most incredible commercials come out of Egypt. Everyone knows that. Egypt's amazing. Well, advertising is one of their biggest industries, along with the uh, pyramid key rings and political instability. Yep, and judging by their cheese commercials, I'm guessing the folks writing their ads are pretty unstable too. Here's number 16. <laughs> So you're an ambitious Egyptian cheesemaker and you're looking for the perfect animal to sell your cheese. A camel? A pussycat? No, a panda of course. Just make sure you buy his cheese. Panda cheese? What the? He's an asshole. The ad agency, well they thought the idea of a vicious panda was a long shot. But the cheese company said, why the hell not? I think that's great, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's great just to shock people. Instead of having a cute, cuddly panda, let's have a kind of homicidal, psychotic panda. And it's just because they won't eat his cheese. <laughs> The classic thing about the panda cheese commercials is the fact that they let them go to air. Do you remember them? And of course, you remember the brand name. Panda. Made in the Hashla. Creepy. The campaign was so successful, they decided to try and run it in America. So they tested it on some kids. Panda. Made in the Hashla. time, the public channelled its fear into a pandemonium of parodies. I use evil eyes on my husband. Ready? That panda takes it next level. Just you know. I'll never ever say no to panda cheese. In 2015, Emirates decided to do something bold. Something breathtaking. Something that had never been attempted before. Meet Eve Rossi and Vince Raffin. Jetman pilots and two of the bravest men on the planet. This is something that you don't want to try at home. Above the Dubai skyline, these guys achieved something amazing. Flying at 120 k's per hour right alongside an A380 airline. Who came up with that? Because I want to shake their hand because it was absolutely brilliant. Flying to the moon and walking around, risky, but worthwhile. So, to me, it's got to be risk versus gain. Is this worth doing? I think it probably is to them. I don't want to be reminded of anything outside when I'm on a plane, let alone someone going, hi, got a backpack. To date, this video has had 19 million views online. Free advertising, love it. Good on them, courageous and well done. I wouldn't do it. No way. What a lovely way to get to Dubai. It's just a pity their luggage is still in Bangkok. I know. I tell you what, though, it's better than sitting next to a crying baby for 15 hours, am I right? Why do you always bring that up? I was going through a very, very emotional time. But I've moved on. I'm keeping strong. As should we. <sighs> and this next ad was so good it passed with flying colours, literally. <laughs> When you're selling TV, you want to sell colour, and Sony is always finding new wild ways to grab our attention. But they took it to the next level in 2006 with a groundbreaking concept shot in a condemned tower block in Scotland. That was all real paint explosions. Shut me up. That's amazing. It's like magical in a way. <laughs> Imagine. 
imagine the amount of work it would have taken to load all of those canisters. Amazing ad. 70,000 litres of paint, plus 1,700 detonators, 250 crew, and over $4 million. And after all that setup, tensions were high on the set. OK, guys. Three. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Not ready. No. When, when I said action, Alex, don't okay. scare me. <laughs> <laughs> I secretly kind of like the notion that with this ad, nobody told the people in the building. And then you've just got this one woman sitting there looking out a window going, what the? That would have been a one hell of a cleaner, wouldn't it, doing that? Is so beautiful. And then a clown from It comes along and it's terrifying. What? Oh my God. And then all of the red paint looks like blood and I can't watch it anymore. But the locals loved it. Except for this guy. I mean, you know, you get vandals, you get graffiti on the walls, but it's too much, in my opinion. There was this one guy. At number 13, Lucky in Love Rhonda sold insurance and romance to Australia. You look so hot today, oh. like a sunrise. You're annoyed. We love love. She represents every Australian woman who's been on a fun holiday in Bali, looking for a little fling, nothing outrageous, and she found it with Katut. You look so hot today. Like a sunrise. I whispered back, kiss me, Katut. We love these guys so much, social media went off in Australia. T-shirts went mad in Bali, and they even got into it at the doggies. You're watching TV commercial after TV commercial that's just selling at you. But what people respond to is story. We're a nation that loves that sort of woman, you know, the Muriels. Looks like I'm next. You want them to find love, and you want someone to be on their side. This holiday romance story ran across five chapters. After getting lucky in Bali, Rhonda's luck runs out on the road. Then she runs into her old flame, Trent Toogood. Look at you, Rhonda. Trent. I have no idea what this has to do with car insurance, but I love the love story. We all love the love story. I saw the road, Rhonda. She's got beautiful red hair, hasn't she? Like fire. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky Katut was actually a forklift driver from Indonesia. And didn't he make the most of his fame? And from this, Rhonda, a.k.a. Mandy McElhaney, shed her barley tan to star in some of Australia's best dramas. If you want to be something else, leave. Or I will take the first opportunity to get rid of you. But she'll always be Rhonda to me. To all of us, mate. Go to Bali, get laid, get a bloke and get a tan. I mean, what more do you want? Eight down, 12 to go. I've never been more repulsed by an ad. Still to come, this tasty blockbuster that fired up a nation. But will it be wild enough to take out the top spot? Check out these knuckleheads. Seriously, there's no helping them. Or is there? Thank goodness our government is here to save the day. This 2012 Victorian public service announcement was essentially a clever way to tell idiots how not to die. Yeah, dumb ways to die. Don't run across a train track. But thanks to our pollies, we learnt the trains aren't the only thing to look out for. Teach yourself how to fly. Eat a two-week-old unrefrigerated pie. It's quite bizarre because it's this happy little, like, dumb ways to die. 
but then it's got like penises that have been cut in half and heads that are often blood spilling out. You know what actually really concerns me though is the amount of things that as a as a 20 something I've actually done like get toast out with a fork. I've done that. Let a, let an axe murder into your house. Have you met my ex? I've done that. I've done a lot of those things. The humble jingle turned into a runaway train with the song charting in Belgium, the Netherlands and even the UK. No wonder with the people behind it like Ollie from the Cat Empire who wrote the music. And this guy, John Maskell, who made the video. We're in the agency and we'd seen this, you know, 100, 150 times while we're animating it and every time it came on, people still wandered over to have a look and have a laugh and that was when we thought, Ooh, hang on a minute, this thing's going to be pretty catchy. <laughs> Dumb Ways to Die is now the world's most shared public service announcement. That's the whole point, isn't it, of those campaigns, is to go viral, and if it saves one life, then well played. Did you know that that ad had over 125 million YouTube hits? Wow. But it did miss out on some other ways to die, I reckon, like giving your honest feedback about your girlfriend's new jeans. Not bad. Uh, what about blowing a kiss to an outlaw motorcycle club? That's a good one. Yep. What about taking on Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards in a game of let's see who can do yeah, the most yeah, drugs? Yeah, that's good. Eating it? street kebabs <laughs> at 2am in the morning. Oh, I've got heaps too, but we're running out of time. One of the dumbest things would have to be dressing up as a lamb on Australia Day. <laughs> So don't be on Australia. Serve lamb on Australia Day. Richie. Cookie. What's up? Can you make an Australia Day Barbie at my place? You know it's Australia Day when you see a new lamb ad. We love lamb ads almost as much as we love lamb. But they must have been really off their chops when they made this one. The 2016 Lamb ad was the biggest and wildest yet with a star-studded cast of Aussies. Including two of the biggest hacks on the planet. Prime Minister, the barbecue is lit. They really went all, all out. The production on this ad was incredible. Right now, there's thousands of Australians stranded overseas. The snowball's chance in hell of eating lamb on Australia Day. Let's go and get them. That ad in particular uh, weirdly stirs this kind of patriotic you part of you. It's like, you're coming home, mate. The unlikely leader of the mission is SBS news icon Li Lin Chin. That was no way to spend Australia Day. What? She's funny. We'll never let that happen to another Australian again. I will buy whatever Li Lin Chin is selling. She could actually play a great Bond villain. She could play the head of Spectre quite well. However, it also managed to offend people all over the world. I don't know how vegans have the energy to comply. Well, oh, mate, in a few hours you'll be eating lamb on the beach. But I'm a vegan now. Okay. Vegans. They're the last minority we can really have a crack at, aren't they? We're spending millions, perhaps even billions of dollars on a television ad encouraging people to eat murdered babies. We just try to live and let live. We love our tofu. When is that going to happen? Well done. Well done. Never. I'm so sorry, vegans. You do great things for the earth and I wish I could join you. I just can't. Little chop. Um, 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 um. Federal health officials consider it an epidemic, yet you rarely hear a thing about it. The virus can be transmitted from person to person, virtually a contagious form of cancer. By the mid-80s, the AIDS epidemic had gripped the world. With the death rate growing and out of control, the Australian government was forced to do something extreme. At first, only gays and IV drug users were being killed by AIDS. But now we know every one of us could be devastated by it. The ad was so confronting, everyone who saw it still remembers it to this day. We were terrified as teenagers. It was like the plague. The fact is, over 50,000 men, women and children now carry the AIDS virus. People were dying. We were all just not really registering how bad this was. But if not stopped, it could kill more Australians than World War II. If you want to get people's attention, you really have to scare the crap out of them. And the Grim Reaper did, and it worked. 
Although the 60-second ad was only on air for three weeks, the impact was massive, and in the years afterwards, infections steadily fell. The Grim Reaper campaign created a political climate where the government could introduce a needle exchange program. That's why it was important. That's why it was part of the thing that made it a non-issue, really, in Australia. Still to come, what is this beaver trying to sell us? They're insane. Advertising executives are insane. And will these badass babies make number one? I think it's the funniest ad I've ever seen. success of their water babies ballet ad, Evian pushed their computer geeks to create these roller babies to help them sell bottled water. I love anything with babies, and so the Evian skating babies, it's ridiculous, like it's so ridiculous. It's kind of silly and stupid, but they're so cute. I love a baby and I love roller skating. Mm, the two combined... No, that's just very creepy. Directed by an Aussie ad whiz and with exterior shot in Melbourne, it featured 134 different babies. Brilliant casting was crucial, obviously, to the commercial success. How did you get the part? Well, lots of work. There was nine months of intensive tumbling. You don't stop. Like the bit of that what interested you in this film? Ever since I was a kid, I've loved dancing. So I said yes. <laughs> now what you hear is not a test. I'm fucking to the beat. Beautifully shot too, great music. This Evian ad was massive and was streamed more than 400 million times, making it one of the most viewed online ads ever. It's an old trick of advertisers. Stick babies in an ad and everyone's going to look. Get a baby in there, get an animal in it, sold. So with all that going for it, Evian must have sold oceans of their fancy H2O, right, Fitzy? No, they actually didn't. In fact, Evian sales declined 25% after the ad was released. But the sequels kept coming. And the water? Well, we're still trying to figure out what it has to do with babies. In 2012, this high-energy ad launched the London Paralympics campaign. And we saw the Paralympians' abilities rather than their disabilities. What they do just defies anything that you know, any able-bodied person can imagine being able to do. But for all the ad's sense of defiance, elation and camaraderie, it's the athletes' origin stories that truly explains the superhuman battles. To stick the backstories in, in the middle of the ad there, really hits home. Gut-wrenching, seeing how they got to where they are. You don't think about all they've been through to be there and now they're doing something incredible with their lives. Every story is inspirational because you've got these people who have struggled and overcome their disability and achieved greatness. The 2012 London Paralympics were the first ever to sell out, raising the event and its athletes to the same level as the Olympic Games, right where it should be. This amazing commercial helped make that happen. Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. At number seven, the creators from Kotex Feminine Hygiene Products let their imaginations run wild. Obviously somebody's seen Naked Gun and gone, OK, we'll go with that. This young lady and her hairy beastie bestie are out for a day on the town. At the salon, at the cafe and at the beach. Far be it from me to comment on the professional whiz kids who run advertising agencies, but I'm sure they were smoking something. They're insane, these people. Advertising executives are insane. Are you even allowed to say beaver? Beaver. Beaver is a little unsubtle, shall we say, and not necessary. 
Although it doesn't really relate to Australia. In Australia, we'd have to walk around with a map of Tasmania under our arms, I think. Hope sales went up. I've never had to purchase any myself. If I do, I will get that brand. <laughs> When your ad is this wild, you're bound to offend someone. This commercial and its humble beaver had the most official complaints of any ad in Australia in 2008. We've never got tampon ads right. We've re like it's always been a struggle. I think surely we're grown up to talk about it a little more clearly. Maybe not. It's comfortable and it works. That's all you need to say. Hilarious. More humour and periods. And then when we start doing it about menopause, I'll be even happier. Up next, will the tongue that outraged Australia be number one? My tongue's been some pretty filthy places, but it's never been on the street. Or will this iconic ad lick the competition? Sick of Rex. <laughs>six the beer commercial so wild it kicked off a big beer ad war i've never been more repulsed by an ad tongues have a place and it's inside the mouth i think <laughs> tui's idea was to forget traditional beer drinkers and target young party people i mean if i could have a tongue that does that then wouldn't have to leave the house surprised that it was allowed to, to go ahead because it is a little weird. Tongue goes on the ground. He didn't have a shower before he got back in the mouth. My tongue's been some pretty filthy places, but it's never been on the street. Okay. It's never been in a bathtub and then on the street. I don't know if that helps sales or not. It looked like a slug. But it worked. Sales went up $40 million. At 40 bucks a slab, that's a million slabs. <laughs> so Chewy's beer rivals came out blasting. But nothing beats the weirdness of the tongue ad. How did the tongue get out of his mouth? Like, I think these things through, you picture it. Oh. Oh, man, that ad is mm. based on so much truth. Remember when we were housemates? Yep. And I, I would wake up sometimes and my tongue would taste like all kind of weird things, remember? <laughs> I said to your socks, undies, remember it tasted like the cat that time I yeah. told you? You reckon your tongue was going out at night like the ad? Yeah. Well, I had to be. Mm -hmm. Best not to think about it. Why don't we focus on a commercial from the late 80s, which is either incredibly sexy or incredibly sexist? I can't tell. <laughs> It's top five time, and this classic scurries in. Set in a decrepit hotel with an army of ants and one a kid now who really loves his job. Sick of Rex. <laughs> ants, pants, unbelievable underwear from Holbrook. The reason why it worked was because it was a woman being empowered about her body and her sexuality. A little bit of rebellion in there. Just made it delicious. Sick of Rex. <laughs> Sickum Rex instantly became a popular catchphrase. I say that at home all the time. We were all saying Sickum Rex in the playground when I was in primary school. I don't think we realised how racy it was. We were like, oh, it's an anteater and it's eating the little ants and isn't that funny and it's tickling her. <laughs> Model Tonya Bird became an overnight sensation, going on to marry a European prince. They just dropped two beaker loads of ants on the legs and uh, <laughs> my girlfriend almost passed out and said, there's no way I would do this. Complaints flooded in, some saying the ad promoted bestiality. I reckon using an Australian mammal to sexually satisfy women is degrading to the echidna. I think you get more complaints today than you did back then. The Conservatives have become more conservative. Yeah, obviously, very risque. I assume echidna sales shot through the roof. <laughs> a decade later, Ant's Pants were looking for another boost in sales, so they dusted off old Rex and gave him another run. This time with It Girls, Nikki Hilton and Kimberly Stewart. Sick em, Rex. But nothing beats the original. None of the sequel ads were as good as that first one. That first one just was completely out of the box, if I'm allowed to use that term. Sick of Rex. <laughs> At number four, we meet Katie, a young girl in a hurry to grow up. 
I tried everything to get my period. Nothing. So, I faked it. Hmm. I love that ad. I love all sanitary product ads. And would you believe, it's actually an ad for a starter kit. The Hollow Flow Starter Kit. With all the feminine products and info you could ever need. And a period starter kit as well. Like, unless that is three bottles of gin and a block of chocolate, you don't need one. What's this? What do you think it is? I'm on my ladies' days. What do I think it is? Ruby Licious nail polish. Someone should have told her in the first place. This isn't something to celebrate. It's the story of a young girl trying to put one over her mum, but she's totally onto it and decides to teach her daughter a lesson she'll never forget. We're throwing you a first moon party. What the hell is a first moon party? No, it's one thing to lie to me, but to take that tone, it's on. I think it's the funniest ad I've ever seen. People started showing up at my house. Grandpa, I miss you. Oh my God. You're so grown up. My grandparents? My friends? This is so weird. weird. My mom's freaking co-workers. There she is. Hey, I got you the super pack. These are coffee filters. Yeah, I wasn't sure what brand you liked. <laughs> <laughs> this ad is so disturbing for me. It's so disturbing. And there are bits in it that are just so gory. I reckon if Quentin Tarantino watched this, he'd be like, you went too far. Tampon commercials are awkward. OK, so let's not make them more awkward. Maybe you should open this first. Period starter kit. Aren't you going to ground me for a while? Why do you think I threw you the first moon party? Would she think I wouldn't know? Periods don't have glitter in them. I liked all those other ads where they just got blue liquid and chucked that everywhere. Why can't they just do that? Come on. Sometimes you just gotta wait. It's 17 wild commercials down and three to go. It's unapologetically epic. So, ladies, I just want to be that guy. So, which will be our number one? commercials and we have reached our top three. With commercials in a countdown of commercials, this has been like a one hour toilet break. Yeah, but we are at our top three. These commercials have blown our minds. There's no squatty potties. There's no violent pandas. There's no embarrassing adolescent girls. These ads are the best of the best. And at number three, it's a commercial featuring a car that's going nowhere fast. <laughs> Facing a huge sales slump in 2001, Honda needed something to save them. Throwing a few million bucks at the problem, they came out with this bad boy. I remember watching this for the first time going, oh, please fall, I'll go with the thing and get, you get involved somehow. They did not do that for real, there is no way. Yes, why? This chain reaction is known as the Rube Goldberg machine. The two-minute ad took six months to plan and over 100 takes, and they finally got this one that worked. I would like to meet the man or woman that came up with this ad. How are you so creatively brilliant that you can think of that? This was no mean feat, testing everybody's patience. Tiny changes in temperature, humidity, and even specks of dust could be enough to ruin it all. I would have loved to have been in the room and they've set it all up and it's incredible and they just flick the little cog and there's a guy in the background just like, you know, eating a packet of cheese. I was like, Cut, come on! And then and the next time someone's sneezing in the background. The ad cost a couple of million to make, but sales went up almost a billion dollars. I love that ad. Others thought so too and copied it. On building sites flogging kitchenwares and, of course, in music clips. As a kid, I particularly liked Mousetrap, the game Mousetrap. This is like adult giant Mousetrap. Isn't it nice when things just work? How cool is that? Carlton deploys its army in the battle of the big beer ads. Big beer ad? Mate, it's huge. It's a big ad. Very big ad. It's, it's a bloody big ad. Very Why 
What a brilliant ad. Carlton Draft were after a massive concept for their beers in 2005 and had one demand. It had to be epic. To get a big look, get in a big-time cinematographer, Andrew Lesney. Didn't he do Lord of the Rings? Big movie. It's unapologetically epic. Gathered together in a freezing valley on New Zealand's South Island, a crowd of 6,000 beer disciples were computer-generated from just 300 locals and backpackers. I bet they pay them in beer. The beer army begins to surge forward. I love it. It's a great song. It's funny. It's stupid. It costs a lot of money, but I'm very glad that it happened. Taste the beer when you're watching the commercial. It couldn't be an ad for Chardonnay. It's got to be about beer. Gutsy beer. Wow, that's a tough job, isn't it? Selling beers to Australians. Oh, all you need is a sign that says beer, job done. Take the afternoon off. Traditionally, the easiest way to sell stuff to blokes is by sticking the product next to a really hot girl. Which is why this next commercial takes the top spot. They found a way to sell something to blokes by using a hot guy. So you think this guy's hot? Well, I'm married, and even if I wasn't, I'm secure enough to acknowledge when another man is attractive. So you're saying that you're attracted to this man? Oh, just, so, yeah, watch yeah. the ad. He's hot. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back at your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. They call it the campaign to end all campaigns, starring the hot guy to end all hot guys. It's the daggy man's aftershave ad that speaks directly to women. Old Spice I'm, I'm a fan of because my dad was. Old Spice was your dad's aftershave. So I had to do something drastic, yeah. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's an oyster with two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now diamond. I think that's why it's so successful is because it's stupid and odd and funny. Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. Everything is on the beach, so there's a, there's a boat set on the beach, and there's, there's a bathroom set which is behind me, and the bathroom shoots up in the air, and I just walk over onto this rig, and I sit down, and you don't see the, uh, the, the cameraman over there. They kind of push me over onto this horse that's sitting just off to the sides. 743 attempts to get the one shot, correct? <laughs> Very close. Actually, it was the 57th take on the third day of production. Yes. But they thought the hard work was worth it because they did heaps of sequels. World I just want that guy doing stuff in a spa bar. So, ladies, should your man smell like an Old Spice man? You tell me. You know, he, he ticked all the boxes. Charisma, great voice, sexy. I mean, everything he had. He has set the bar impossibly high for other men all around the world. Do you want a man who smells like he can bake you a gourmet cake in the dream kitchen he built for you with his own hands? Of course you do. That's one ad that actually made me want to go out and get Old Spice. When your man smells like the fresh scents of Old Spice, you can go anywhere. Unless, of course, you prefer to stay in. Yes. I love him. Sold. Give me two. I do love wearing cologne. I think it smells nice on girls. Although it could work out bad if, you know, your boyfriend's home and you're wearing men's cologne and he's like, who are you with? When I saw that commercial, I was like, I gotta have him on the show. As the popularity of Mr. Spice went up, so did the sales of the Daggy Dad scent. Look at yourself. Not back to me. Our favourite ad inspired copycats all around the world. I am on that horse. Move. Cow. Now look at me. I'm on a tiger. Ah! I like the idea that women were like, yes, that's the man I want. And we're like, we, we, he doesn't exist. That man doesn't exist. I'm on a horse. Mm, no, you're not. You're just freakishly tall. Yeah, freak cool. Thank you. That's the end of the countdown for the wildest commercials. We hope you enjoyed it. I learned a lot tonight. Did you? No, not really. But I saw a unicorn pooping rainbow ice cream and serving mm -hmm. it to kids, so you could say that that's almost like learning, isn't sort it? Sort of. Why don't you join us next week for another outrageous pop culture countdown? Good night. Good night. Next time on 20 to 1, Epic Fails. From dangerous devices... Oh, no! What do we do?
ridiculous thing. To the perils of live TV. What a way to know that you're dead. I love it. <laughs> Moments of madness. What an absolute fail. And superstar stuff-ups. What the bloody hell were you thinking? Next time on 20 to 1, epic fails. Why is it that we find people getting hurt so funny?